Yeah. Uh, Means writing to everyone. Yes. Yeah. Thank Please you. Please continue. So, what happens? You receive the raw data, sometimes from your own labs, sometimes from a collaborator, sometimes from elsewhere, or you generated your own data. This is something, the problem starts from here. So if you look at it, Nanopore have democratized data generation and lots and lots of people are generating it themselves. Illumina and PacBio, usually it's outsourced or they do it in their own facility, but usually done by someone else. You send the sample or the library and some other team provides you the raw data. The very first question comes is, where do I store this data? See, sometimes you get the data on a hard drive. I was keeping even my data was sitting on a hard drive. How will I store this data? Because you can't trust the hard drive. Where will I store this data? Is there a server with a RAID and guaranteed storage available? And then what to do, where to do, and how to start? This is a common problem. We have seen that people easily take a week to 30 days to complete analysis of data. This is too long a time, particularly during this nanopore periods, when you can generate a data in two to three hours. Why to waste almost a month to do the analysis? So what do we do with the raw data? From raw data, for different applications, you have to do the uh, analysis, then you have to create a report either for yourself or someone else. If it's a hospital, you have to create a report or if I end up writing a publication. So there are a variety of reasons people do it, starting from metagenome, whole genome, metagenome, exosomes, whole genomes, a wide variety of reasons we generate the raw data. And wide variety of uh, end results are required. On the other side, when a raw data comes, first thing first you have to do QC. Is the quantity and quality correct? Right. This is first first thing very important. Someone said I'll give you 5 GB data of Q20 plus. Is it true? And for each sample you have to check. That itself is a tedious task, by the way. And then you have to do the filtering, you have to do the trimming, and then you have to do the alignments or assembly. Then depending on what work you're doing, you may have to do a counting application, right? You have to count, or you have to find the SNPs. Then finally, you need graphical outputs, tables, figures, and then a quality control of what was done. That's also important. Right, very important. And then you do tertiary analysis, and then finally it's all done. But this takes sometimes a team, sometimes people are on leave. This can drag on for a lot of time. And I have seen myself that almost 30 to 40% of the NGS data generated never gets published or even never gets properly analyzed. So how will you analyze the raw data? You have only a few options. Boss start command line scripting, right? So you understand command line scripting. You have installed all the programs. This is a big thing. Usually you need a team. And then QC the installations, right? Or you go online and do. For example, there is Epi to me from Nanopore. There are a few, few other tools available for certain things like for microbio, like for SARS-CoV-2. There are online tools are available, but the problem with the online tools, one is you can't read a paper and say, I, am, I want this analysis to be done. It's not possible. Whatever is available, there is available. And then you have to upload all the data. It's not only in many parts of India. Once you go outside large cities, I don't think you can upload 100 GB of data, that are uploading 100 GB of data itself might take you days. You can hire a bioinformatician if you find one. And see, a single bioinformatician is not as powerful as a bunch of bioinformaticians who work closely together, right, so that they are on cutting edge. 
or you can find a collaborator who has such a team and who will say hey i want to be on the paper right i want to be on your grant application as well right? or you can buy an ngs analysis software these are all black boxes different companies sell ngs analysis software we don't know what algorithms they use when you publish what will you write right and how is displayed and whether it is outdated and how can you customize or again you may have to learn quite a bit of something um see even we are not fully using excel we are not fully even using sometime uh, gmails and the g sheets um so when are we going to even learn a new software so what the uh, end uh, solution we are giving is it's you you are going to do going to analyze your data because you know better why you did it you know better what is expected expected not the results you are expecting but the end goals what are the different genes which are differentially expressed what is the mutation right it's you so how can you how can we empower you for that and who is going to store the data take care of the data where that's also you so we start with the first thing though we are going to speak about under because i'm when i'm going to say how to drive you have to also finally see what kind of car you have right what kind of a bike motor bike you have that's the speed at which you can go even a good driver needs a good car so here is our first first um, solution we call it as gt gpu storage gt is genotypic gpu is the graphical processing units you will be shocked and surprised i don't know why no one is using it yes gpu is this basic gpu what we are having is 20x the speed of a regular cpu so lead that apart firstly if you see this has 240 tb of storage and it's also what we call as raid so even if one disk fails the data is not lost so that's uh, the gt storage system we are starting with what do you do with the data first do a qc and then store it or store it first and then do a qc so you need something which is faster than a typical cpu so this machine the basic one which we are going which we have is a 20x faster than a cpu what is 20x faster if you want to do an alignment and if it runs almost a day this will do it in maybe an hour's time or to our stack so firstly i'll tell about the cars then we'll talk about the street and the driving license so so we generated different systems from the left top this is a laptop system ideal for people who are using nanopore technology or ideal people who are traveling so this is loaded with uh, storage it can also run um prometheon or minion easily um it's a laptop based gpu system and then an equivalent is the gt gpu mini which can do the um which is a stand alone machine but you sits in a lab to do it and then there is gt gpu pro and the gt gpu tower which is almost built like a super computer this is 45 times faster that's what a cpu server will do it in two days time this gpu tower can do it in one to two hours time so firstly now once you have the best of the machines right best of the cars then let's start driving because otherwise no the one thing difference between biology and bioinformatics is we want to put something in a excel sheet we want to do some formula and see the result immediately whereas in a bioinformatics case you fire the job and then go back home maybe it's running for 12 hours 14 hours sometime assemblies might crash after 24 hours then you have to fix it maybe the camera you have to change and then rerun so all these takes to be a bioinformatician so the faster the machine you have sooner you can become a bioinformatician so what is this idea this parallel processing allows 
high, higher accuracy base calling in case of nanopore, and then faster analysis, faster reporting, all of them, that's where Commander is going to come. But with and without Commander also, you can use this GPU systems. So now let's get inside what is Commander. The first requirement, this is including me, I am sure many of you want to avoid command line except for some basic things. See, when I looked at the data which you all input, 50% of you are not comfortable running command line. 50% of you are saying I'm comfortable, I'm fine running a command line. Um, and then almost 80% of you are beginners of NGS analysis, um, around 15 to 20 or intermediate and 5% of experts. I thank the experts for coming because we need your comments on the commander. So we made commander for any type of sequence platform. And the basis of commander I'll tell now itself is not, there is minimal number of scripts we have written, programs we have written. But most of them are pipelines, well-known pipelines, which every high-end bioinformatician uses. So the back end of a commander is all public domain, well-optimized workflows and software, which is already available. But you need not learn how to do it. You need not install and learn and uh, do how to do it. It connects all of them. You will be shortly seeing it. So it's for any sequencing platform and any program. Any program, I mean, any program which is available in the world. This commander can run it. Only thing, you need not run the command line scripting. Rather, commander will be writing those command line scripts. See, these were made before AI. But AI kind of work it does, which you will shortly know. So, I'm starting with the problem which we solved. When the COVID pandemic started, one of the most important things people were looking at is how much is COVID positive, right? That's one thing. Second is, where is, what is this variant? How it is mutating? Are we, see, you, you remember like one year ago, two years ago, we were all scared. There's going to be a new variant which is coming and going to kill everybody, right? So we were sequencing like hell. But thankfully, all the new variants were slowly becoming they killed themselves basically, right? Milder and milder and almost killed. And last of the COVID sequencings are happening everywhere. But there are labs in India which are still doing it all over the world, which are still sequencing so that we are ready for something happening. So what was the problem? Sequence and upload the data to the INSOCO uh, National Database of India. And as you know, there are many other... Um, GSA and other viral uh, databases where one can upload. But there has to be, you have to say what is this variant, what is the consensus sequence, everything it has to, one has to do and do it. But our problem was these were all run on RT-PCR labs which were in remote areas. And no one had NGS lab experience in those areas. So we could actually bypass that by taking a nanopore mini on MK1B or MK1C, which are more like plug and play. MK1C is a plug and play if you have used it already. MK1B needs a server and, or a compute system and other things, but they're fairly easy to use. But the problem was there were no bioinformaticians. And learning a, a lab work for a RT-PCR person is much easier than actually learning NGS analysis. And then we had other problems. Illumina data sets, they're too large, bad and it's harder to analyze because, see, for long reads, if you generate, say, 10 MB, uh, you may have to generate 100, 200 MB of short reads. And those programs are all also require higher end machines to run. So finally, we have to give such, such kind of a report, right? But the reports are big, which I'm going to now show. Um, it is an Omicron variant. Actually, this is a report one of them we uh, submitted. Um, so now I'm going to just 
go and run commander and show you how it runs. So this is how commander looks, software looks. Uh, it's very simple to use. Um, you can start from process converting fastq file to fasta. I think that's the most simplest thing to do. But sometimes you have fastq file, but you have to do a blast. Um, you have to convert into a fasta file format, right? Or someone gave a VCF file. This is after all the analysis. Now you have to filter it or put them all together. There are many, many things. So all everything can be done. So now I'm going to show you a simple thing. See here, you have import, various input, various output path. One can set, see I'm, I can set a input path or I can set an output path. So since I have already set an input path, right? I want to show you firstly how a fastq file looks. You would have seen it, but I'm just going to show you for those who have not seen. So I have to go to the, wait a minute. So this is the input path. So I'm just going to open one file. So this is how a typical uh, fastq file looks like. It starts with the add symbol, and then those are all the reads, all what are the meaning of the reads, and then the sequence here. Then you have a plus sign, and then this is the quality score. So this is a typical fastq file. So we have to start with this fastq file. So the foremost of what to understand what is this, what is in this fastq file is our question so now what i'm going to do is just take one of them and i'm going to show you see output path is also set so i need not go and do it but you can go and change the output path see i can put it in pictures or somewhere so i have already set the path so i can take one of the file or i can take the whole folder whichever I want. And then I want to see, hey, what is here, boss? I don't know. What is the quality? How many reads are there? What is in there? So I can go to the tools and say just the, generate statistics. So I create a project. So it creates a little project. Now I go and put so this is nanopore and I want fastq stats, different statistics, statistical method I can do. I can choose save and then I can run. So when he's running, he will already show you what he's doing. So how he is doing. And then we can go ahead and see, for example, here, So what is this barcode? What is this barcode? How many reads were there? How many bases? What is the uh, median read length? All of them will come in a table. So while one process is running, I can also go and do input, um, say COVID data, FASTQ data, and then I can start a workflow SARS-CoV-2 analysis. So this will easily tell you how it is being done. So this is a nanopore. See, there are different pipelines. There is general pipeline is the pipeline where people just use, uh, just align it, take a BAM file and do it. Arctic pipeline was created during COVID period. Specifically, that's Arctic for the protocol. And then how much CPU I want to use, maybe I'll put four CPUs. Um, 
which means eight threads it, it can run, eight parallel. And then you protocol, midnight protocol, the midnight name itself is came for the 12, 12 o'clock. So these are all 1.2 KB reads, um, PCF products. So you can set what is my minimum length, maximum length, or you can do nothing and save it, and then you can start the process. So now you can see how he is doing it. Okay. So if there is something wrong, he will say, if nothing is wrong, so it's not a full black box, he will tell what he is actually doing. So I'm just opening. See, he's saying what and all he's going to do. Okay. He's calculate. See, once he starts selling, no. So he's looking at bed files, he's going to calculate genome coverage, all of them he'll be doing. And then he will do file by file. How much is doing, you can see. So while this work is going on, okay, so you know what is doing, genome coverage calculation, each one, whatever is doing, he's doing. And whatever has to happen has happened, you need not worry. Unless something happens, he will show a red light. Um, otherwise, he will continue to do the work. See, basically, if you take this work um, and give a, give 96 samples on this laptop, this is CPU laptop, it might take four to six hours to finish. If we do it on a regular CPU server, maybe one to two hours. But if I take a GT GPU kind of a machine, it might finish in 15 to 20 minutes, we can complete the whole analysis. So while this is going on, we can again go and do something else. Do RNA-seq or a variant calling data. Or if you want to do a QC of something also, even this data QC also he will make. I can go and take another one, another one and do this. I can also import databases. New references can be added. Instead of SARS-CoV-2, you can bring the monkeypox and align the sequence to monkeypox. See, this gives the flexibility for you to do literally what you want. And then if you see the tools, you have a wide variety of tools to choose from, right? Starting from filter and it's all explained. Every tool is explained what it does. Most of the tools are written by us here. So these are all simple tools. Some of the tools, some of the workflows are all already accepted workflows for exome analysis. So you're not, we have not invented anything. Maybe there is a publication behind it and we have downloaded script and checked it and commander is only throwing a command on top of it to run it. And you have the ability to, um, for example, I say create a project. And then if I go here, see it's still running, you can see, because I put a lot of files, it will take some time maybe by the time we finish. So here we can go and see different, different options everywhere. You can start with iron torrent, which one you want, all of these things you can choose. So this itself is a, a long command line scripting process required for a, even for a simple trimming project. Because sometimes you want to sequence only the adapter. Because if you take Illumina reads and then you start trimming, you'll find nothing because already it's short sequence. Whereas if you do a nanopore read, you can generously trim. Uh, firstly, the uh, barcodes are long, um, but you can generously trim because it's already five, six K, KB or uh, maybe much, much longer. Losing some 30, 40 bases will not affect you. So like this, you can see, you can different terminals, different things can run. See here, you can see is still generating outputs. So meanwhile, I'll quickly go and show you one COVID analysis, how reports are given. See, you can see here, one of the thing is we give, provide what we call as uh, consensus, consensus sequence. So if you click on this all sample faster, so it creates a faster file for the two barcodes. See barcode 18, and then all of them comes one behind the other. 
barcode 17. So if there are 96 samples, all 96 FASTA files are actually, these are all sitting on the, uh, this place, wherever we originally gave the output. Um, on the desktop, we put, I think I put the output set on desktop. So I can open one of the COVID analysis and then see where everything is sitting. See consensus, all sample FASTA. So you have the FASTA file created, which you can use. Um, just upload into any database and understand it. Or you can open it from the commander window or outside also. I'll go to the commander window. You can also look at the lineage. What are the lineage? What clade it is? All of them we will create it. These were all, I think, done during the Delta time. So all the tables, all what you require, everything is any substitutions, all of them are made. You can edit this table for uploading. The different ones, see, these are all the Pangolin database is downloaded. Commander itself downloads the Pangolin database updated if you want, or it can run on whatever database which you have. Um, and then lineages, what lineage is each, that table is also made. And then very interesting is what variants. And then I'm going to show you the reports, how it looks. So this report is something many people in Insacock said they never made the report like that because they never had that time. See here. And this also can be customized with your logo. So this commander made this report by itself. You don't need to uh, intervene anything, even how the work was done, how many reads were generated. Even here it's dynamic. You can see more entries. how each amplicon is covered, both graphical, so that now you can see here this PCR primer, maybe I have to change, right? So each one you can see, and then the consensus file, how it is generated, how many contexts were there, is there any non-ATG character? This could be N, for example. And what is the lineage of this sample? How much is genome covered? how much X coverage on the genome. Usually these lower ones are all on the mutations. And then each variant or the mutation or the base change, how it is shown, all these things, graphical, and then this can be customized for you. So once you uh, work hard and customize one time, so we customized in our next generation lab, uh, NGS analysis lab one time, and then we used it to generate these uh, reports. So you have uh, lots of workflows for variant analysis. This can be amplicon variant, methylation analysis, whole genomes, exome. All of these are all workflows. All you need is FASTQ files, and then it can run through everything. You can change the reference genome. Usually, its exome is the human reference genome. SARS-CoV pipeline. So you can see down to 16 as metagenome pipeline, everything is possible. And then these are all customizable. Because what is there? You have to do QC, you have to do trimming, you have to do alignment. So it's all, all those blocks are already there. So you can only put together. And then finally for reporting, uh, changes has to be made here. What format you want to make the report? Um, you want to have a footer, you want to have a PDF, all these things are possible. So what's commander doing? Commander is making yourself, see the word commander came from the Tamil word called Talaiba, the boss. So now you can analyze like a boss. That's what it's about. So I'm going back to the slideshow. Um, see, a lot of people use commander and now I'm going to introduce you to someone special who gave a lot of feedback for developing the commander. And he used it during, and he's also in, not in a, the bigger cities of India, but the, maybe the next of cities in India called Nagpur. So, Dr. Krishna, are you around? 
maybe you can unmute yourself we can see you so dr krishna um worked with us in the sense we rather worked with him uh, we supplied reagent we supported him and he is one of the key scientists in india belong to the what they call as insacog and this lab i think nagpur is right in the middle of india uh, one minute dr krishna himself is calling yeah, dr krishna can you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. they are unable to find you i think uh... No, uh, I, I find you. I'm trying to reach him. Yes, one second. No, Dr. Krishna's mic yeah, is yeah, muted. Yeah, 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 I can. I, yeah. Okay, Dr. Krishna has come and we can see you also. Yes, so, yeah. uh, this Nagpur uh, CCR Niri is almost in the middle of our country. And he has been working on many things. Um, um, and he was a postdoc from uh, University of Toronto, Canada before uh, coming over here. And um, he is currently um, heads that environmental virology cell at CSAR near India, and he was felicitated as one of the Corona warriors for his exemplary contributions towards fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. Not just RT-PCR, he did a lot of things, and then he did sequencing as well. Uh, over to you, Dr. Krishna. Look forward. Yeah, to Dr. Raja, thank you so much uh, for having me here. Uh, only one thing I would like to say that, you know, uh, the beauty of science is in making very complex things simple. That helps our understanding. And, you know, the ascent of the man is in his curiosity. The, the thirst of curiosity can only be quenched when we have certain tools or we have the speed to do it. The classic example is in the COVID-19, how many groups, many researchers came across the world and made very complex, seemingly complex things very simple. And uh, whole genome sequencing is one of the strongest weapon in mitigation against COVID-19. Although with RT-PCR, we can know what is positive, what is negative, only at the sars cov 2 level. But when it comes to the variant level, uh, only genome sequencing can you know, let you know. When this pandemic started, if we go back to its uh, origin in China, there was seemingly only one variant. And that time, the genome sequencing was not of that much of relevance because the whole genome was submitted by uh, China and everybody was pondering on that. But once this virus started mutating and changing, the significance of uh, genome sequencing came up like anything. And then the... can't do it. Because earlier when RT-PCR also came, it was considered as a very complex thing and very few labs used to do. Now, with this, you know, initiative of government and many other, you know, uh, good groups coming around, RT-PCR is done by many labs, even at, you know, uh, college and university levels. Similarly, we always dreamt about even, it is a dream of Raja sir also, to, you know, make it so simple that any lab can do it. So, one of the important things here is the bioinformatics part. If we look at the sequencing part, of course, sequencing part is also very complex. I mean, I have done sequencing from the time when we used to use gels and all. So I'll not discuss much into the depth of that. But to say that, to see the transition that today, electrical signals are converted into the bases and we, are, we can see the, you know, all the base pairs readings in a, in a fraction of, you know, minute or an hour. It's all because of the development of the science. And this has let us do sequencing at a very large scale. Now, coming to the bioinformatic part, of course, bioinformatics is a very important tool and we can't see or we can't understand this kind of genomic data without bioinformatics. But making this simpler is also very important because it's a very easy job for a trained bioinformatician. But when you talk about, you know, making it a very simple thing, every place you can't have a very good bioinformatician at your disposal. As Sir very rightly introduced that, you know, I am from a kind of a second tier city, which is Nagpur. It's, of course, a very, you know, significant city, but you can't match it with, uh, you know, Mumbai and Pune, the type of, you know, prowess they have in terms of all scientific fields, even at Bangalore. So, at this place also, sequencing was possible because of graphical user interface, which was developed by Dr. Raja in the form of Commander. That gave us the confidence to jump into that. And we also slowly developed and learned the bioinformatics around it. I mean, we didn't have to learn bioinformatics to jump into that. We jumped into that, that with, uh, you know, kind of a, you know, a lifesaver tied around us, which is commander. And we learned bioinformatics around it. 
so i mean i should be very thankful to raja sir and his team he very rightly said that this uh, software is like a thalaiva which means a commander and i would say that raja sir team is like a chennai super king and our <laughs> raja sir is the mahendra singh dhoni so yeah. heartiest congratulations to you dr raja yeah. for for making such a wonderful turn and i think it is one of a kind of a tool in the world if i am not wrong such kind of graphical user interface i have not seen i uh, not come across so i mean a lot of new features have been loaded into that i was very happy to see so many different platforms have been you know included into that earlier it all started with our you know uh, ont platform but uh, i am very thankful that it has been extended to many other platforms so once again congratulations thank you raja sir yeah thank you thank you thank you dr krishna um see um apart from dr krishna uh, see but we are always dependent on him to give us the first go ahead uh, of this version it works fine and uh, uh, many other labs um, they are not very communicative but they used it they later told the problems whereas with dr krishna he will tell the problem when it happened he will send a whatsapp message this is not working um, we will fix it we'll ask others sometimes they might be doing a different feature so they may not have seen that problem um so thanks again dr krishna that was great uh, our contribution through you to the nations and the world's uh, covid uh, 19 pandemic war uh, we very much appreciate uh, your thank you inputs. um now there are other users uh, this is another big lab trivandrum which is almost same uh, size city like nagpur uh, big virology lab um these are two different labs one was a covid lab and the other one was a virology microbiome uh, laboratory where uh, different data analysis pipelines uh, were used um, so commander has run i think almost 40000 to 50000 covid samples were analyzed during um, the pandemic and maybe many other samples uh were analyzed because we don't keep a log because we want it to be an offline tool there is no need for internet internet is needed only when you want to change the reference or update commander but otherwise it works without any that's why you can take it wherever you want basically these are from the users there are lots of customers from sri lanka pakistan nepal to usa uk um many places africa um, we have also given it free for uh, smaller countries because it's uh, like dr krishna said it's easier to come and use something like as commander and then you understand uh, uh, bioinformatics and then you can write your own scripts uh, but if you want a complete report many bioinformaticians are using by the way commander so these are some of our customers who are using commander um this is publication uh, many publications are coming this is thank to dr krishna his publications are all with that we are also preparing a publication on commander itself um because all this covid times we never had time to sit together and put write a paper so finally what are we giving you can either get this commander for your server and we help it through online um, share any desk to set it up for you that we have done for uh, many people or you can get this gt gpu uh, systems because we found that you you buy a server for $50000 whereas a server for $15000 almost one third one fourth of it can be even faster than that with a gpu system so you can get it all pre installed so that you can go just plug and play and start using it and if you have a trouble see the one of the main important thing for a biologist getting into ngss is someone has to say boss you are doing well please go ahead what you are doing is right things have come out well that like no when you learn cycle your dad might be saying that he is running behind you holding the cycle but he might have he may not be there um, waiting somewhere else for you to come around right so like that we will be there to make sure for your applications you learn how to use then you learn more and then you can be on your own um 
that's what we are here for. Um, and then this is part of the commander team. I'm sorry, we, we couldn't put everybody. Uh, I think the pictures came late. They are a little bit shy. Uh, Shri, I think uh, you have not put the two more people there. So this is the team, support team and uh, commander team. Um, so thank you all of you from all around the world. A big thank you for all of you and look forward to uh, discussion. Any questions, everything. Over to you, back.